Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Halls of Horror, in which you'll be playing two to four players. It takes about an hour or so to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game Halls of Horror, you're playing in a trapped area, maybe a warehouse or whatever, and you're trying to escape. You need to find the keys and get out of there as quick as possible. If you can do that before your opponents do, you win. But there's a twist to the game. There's a killer on the loose, and the killer is going to have a lot of health and uh, gets enraged as the game goes on. You will be taking part in using the killer to mess with your opponents, and they'll try and mess with you as turns go on, and the first player draws those killer cards and allowing them to then use actions that will force the killer to do certain things, such as move or fight or any of these other things they can go through certain doors that you can't while you're trying to progressively go left right up or down using actions to attempt puzzle rooms locked rooms gather resources and of course load yourself up with shotguns and pistols in order to defeat the killer and your opponents and get out alive you can get a certain amount of keys and get out you will win the game but it will be quite a challenge let's go ahead and show you down below everything you get and then how to play an idea of the game so here we have the game Halls of Horror and all that's included in this prototypey goodness. And as you can see, there's starting locations for each of the players. There's exit tiles that will be included throughout the game. And there's an A and a B deck, which you can go ahead and choose between. To set up the game, it's pretty simple. You'll select A or B, you'll shuffle the deck up, and then you're going to deal out 14 cards. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Along with taking these two exits and putting them into the deck as well. And these will be the outsides of what is basically going to be a five by four grid. You're gonna shuffle up these as well. And then you're going to go ahead and paste, paste them face down like this. Let's see if I can do a pretty good job. Um, one more, something like this. And then you've got your basic warehouse setup. Each of the tiles is going to represent a character, and you've got Mia, Zoe, Ian, and Ben. You're going to place them there based on the number of players where you're going to place them, whether they're opposite or if all four, then they're all going to be here. It also depends on the number of players how big this area is going to be. You've got these tokens you can utilize to help you defeat problems. You've got, you've got shells and uh, bullets, keys, and then tokens that are basically going to cover certain areas on the board, whether they are going to be locked areas or whether they're going to be removed based on the fact that you've gathered certain resources from the board. You're going to also get a deck of cards. Every player is going to get five of these guys here moving up, down, left, or right, as well as searching a combat attack and escape card and your turn summary and resolve summary. This is the bad guy deck here, and it's going to be used once around in which one player, the first player, is going to draw the top card of the deck, see how many actions they get and anything that they're going to have to do throughout the round that's going to move the killer. And the killer is going to be placed somewhere on the board, and it's going to be going around the board and attacking players. So uh, this is the first player marker that you give to somebody and it's going to pass every round. And then it also tells you if you're the master of ceremony or not and how you're drawing cards from that deck. These are going to be your lock tiles for specific locked rooms and your health for your character, your health for the villain, and whether they're enraged or not. The villain starts at a certain point and can increasingly get farther along on the track to uh, do more damage and have more die. These cards over here, your knife, your uh, shotgun, pistol, axe, Kevlar vest, and first aid are all items that you can gain throughout the game. And of course, there's going to be panic cards in case you get panicked and what happens to you when you get panicked. And this deck here, which is going to be your uh, puzzle deck and or your uh, action deck. You're going to be drawing cards from here depending on the room. On your turn, it's rather simple. It tells you on this card here what you do. You're going to choose your action in secret and reveal it, which is basically one of these cards here. If it says you're going to go right, you go right. Maybe it'll tell you to go up or down, depending on what you want to do. Then you're going to resolve player actions in turn order, flipping over the room, seeing what they do. Uh, most of them are going to have some kind of action on it, and that will allow you, if you did an action in that room, it would allow you to uh, draw this deck here. And uh, basically, actions work like this. If this one says uh, reveal five, you're going to flip over five. And then based on the amount of the different symbols here, it's going to be what happens to you. So first of all, are there any of these symbols? Are there any of these and these? What is the most? In this case, there's a panic that is one, and there's no X on the heart area. And it says to search the room, you also need to own a knife. So if you don't own a knife, you can't even do this. And it tells you up there. But you can gain Kevlar vest if you get more vests than anything else. In this case, if it's a tie, it's the one that is furthest 
closest to the left. Different rooms offer different types of searching. When you accomplish getting something in the room, whether it be something that locks the room instantly or whether it be something that gets covered up after it happens, uh, you're going to place it like that. You're then going to end your turn. And everybody's going to do the same thing. Well, you're looking for keys in the game and you're looking for the room's exits. You need to have a certain amount of keys in order to exit and you'll also have to do this search deck to exit as well. After everybody has attempted to perform an action, which is usually going to be either move or search the room, then the first player is going to draw a card from this deck here. Let's go ahead and pick a new one and uh, do what it says. In this case here, it says, use the, fo use the following killer symbols according to the regular rules. Depending on where the killer is placed is what's going to happen. And these symbols illustrate what you can do depending on if you're the master of ceremony or not tells you that you can activate him if he's down if he is going to be um i guess attacking or moving or whatever and then you can go ahead and move him based on the room season so he'll start somewhere and then if he moves into your area he can then attack and you'll be using die to attack you can also choose to use a combat escape or combat um attack and uh, choose to mess with the killer in certain ways. You'll have certain tokens, these guys here, that will let you do certain things with the die that will help you throughout the game. But your objective is just to complete certain rooms, gather the keys, and escape. Like, for instance, this puzzle room, it, basically what happens is this room becomes closed behind you if you're the only character in here. And you can put maybe a closed symbol on here. And then you're going to attempt to solve this puzzle, which is going to hopefully end well in unlocking the room. And if not, then you're going to suffer some kind of penalty, like a loss of health. And that's the basic idea of the game. There's a ton of different puzzly rooms. There's a ton of things that can give you keys or maybe a weapon to help you fight against the killer. And uh, things like shotguns and Kevlar vests to keep you pretty much safe in this game. You can also choose to mess with other players in certain ways, not including just the killer, but with your own character. And then, of course, these cards will do certain things, like allow you to place face down gifts, gifts in empty rooms. And when you walk into them, you can go ahead and search and take that, Ooh, like a Kevlar vest. These are all different, though, and ever changing. But that's the basic idea idea of the game. Of course, there is a turn-by-turn -turn summary and whatnot, which you can go ahead and look up on Facebook, for, but for now, I think you get a good idea of how the game plays and what you're trying to do as you're looking to find that exit. Let's see if we can find it here. Mm, sarcophagus room. There's the exit. Get the two keys, escape the puzzle, and you can win the game of Halls of Horror. All right, let's come up and talk about it. So a couple caveats, and the first one is the killer spawning, basically at the end of the round, for the first round, the player that's last will get to place it in a certain space on the board, which is gonna be anywhere in this outer ring. Additionally, these like fist tokens are mainly gonna be utilized during the search deck. If it tells you to flip over four, this will let you flip over two more and choose one, which can help you in that puzzling system. You'll gain these in certain ways throughout the game to basically make your life a little easier. You're gonna have to deal with loading your shotgun and pistols too. Once you get them, that's not gonna be enough. You need to have weapon, you're gonna need to have bullets in order to utilize them, but it'll make it easier to fight the bad guy when you roll. Certain rolls require a three up or a four up. The enemy, while he is able to be knocked down, will never fully stay down. He's always going to be getting back up via an activation, as well as, of course, being able to move and slash. He's basically on your tail. And you have to be careful, because if you mess with the wrong person in this game, one of your opponents, they might choose to make sure that, that killer starts messing with you. So it is a semi-social, semi-tactical style game. You're going to be trying to get out with those keys. The puzzling aspect is pretty simple. It's just flipping over cards and seeing if you can get the majority, while utilizing certain tokens to help you along the game, as well as making sure your opponents don't gather the resources you need first. You can destroy your opponents and gather their keys and whatnot, and that will help you escape as well, or you can play solely on your own, trying to forego your opponents and stay away from them as far as possible, stay away from the killer, and just get what you need to get out. There's all different types of strategies in this game that you can utilize to successfully escape. The board's ever-changing. The amount of rooms is quite large. This is the uh, B deck, and there's over 20 different rooms in just this one here. And the fact that you can choose either deck is nice as well. Now, if there is specifically there's certain times when the rooms will be switched or swapped and whatnot and you're never going to not have enough keys to escape at least somebody's going to escape or everyone will die when you die you'll be a dead character and your turn gets skipped and whatnot so you want to make sure that you don't die it's important it's hard to die in this game before somebody wins but it does happen it, definitely something you want to be aware of throughout the game uh, it has a simultaneous action selection which is nice and it has the fact that you're going to be uh 
controlling the killer, which is something that is not normally usually how games like these work. Usually the killer just enacts randomly towards the closest, closest player. This kind of gives you more autonomy in the game. Um, and it has some unique artwork. So I like all the artwork as far as the board's concerned and the cards in the back and the fronts. Some little critiques are, I'm not a big fan of the currently what the characters look like, but I imagine they'll get changed. Um, so I'm not going to judge it too solely on that. As well as with the cards like these here, it's hard to tell what's front and what's back. Sometimes they get turned over and you can't tell. Just a little pet peeve of mine, but something that people probably do not fluster about too much. And uh, the fact that you have to always be aware of what you need, when you need it, and how to get it. There is definitely tactical decisions needed in this game. There's also a little bit of luck as to what cards get drawn in this deck here, which we'll talk a little bit about right here. The room is closed. Choose an exhausted empty room. That room is locked until the end of the game, and you can get to make an action for the killer. Or if you are unable to perform the above, you can get two actions with the killer. The killer's activated. All characters currently in the same room of the killer um, receive the panic status, and panicked is not good. Panicked? Ah! It says, as long as you're panicked, draw one less card when you're searching. So that puzzling aspect, you get one less. And uh, re-roll one success in... Oh yeah, one less card when searching. And re-roll one success in combat. You may remove this card using a search action. So instead of using a search action, you can remove this. Which is nice, but it keeps you in place and it slows you down a little bit. There's no real turn loss, but you have that option, which is, is cool about this game. Overall, it's a fun little horror game with a little bit of suspense as well thrown in there because you have to be aware of what your opponents are doing and when they're doing it, where the killer is at all times. The fact that the killer can get enraged and never fully dies is an interesting trick too because in a lot of these type of games, uh, it reminds you of these movies like Freddy and Jason and whatnot. And this killer does feel like that. He's always getting up, he's always following, and he's always doing as much as he can to mess with you. And as they get as he gets crazier and crazier, it gets harder to deal with and characters start dying off if people do not win quick enough. Really like this little game. It was a fun one. It's definitely gonna have its specific type of crowd based on the genre, based on the style of the game, and the fact that it's a semi-puzzle, semi-tactics style game. But if you're digging this, if this seems like something you'd like, I suggest taking a look at it down below, currently on Kickstarter, The Halls of Horror. Just a few little nitpicks, but overall it's a fun little game.